Hi and welcome to the Azam Sharp channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammed Azam and as you can uh, hear from my wife, I'm really really excited about iOS 8. Uh, so many new things Apple have announced. It's really Christmas really came early for me at least. I've never said that before but really this is really really cool. So many new things. If you just want to go through what is new, 4,000 new APIs, Touch ID, PhotoKit, manual camera controls, health kit, home kit, cloud kit, handoff, and if you want to build games, there's scene kit, there's sprite kit, advancement and sprite kit, metal, which is the OpenGL framework, really, really nice, and the last but not the least, a completely new language to program in. Swift language that was introduced by Apple in WWDC and all the things that were actually introduced in WWDC. Uh, we are going to cover Swift uh, in many many tutorials over here at Azam Sharp channel and uh, I hope you like it. So this is the first tutorial about Swift. Let's get started. So you can see that this is the uh, Xcode 6 that I'm using right now. Uh, one of the files that you will see over here is the playground file. Now the playground file allows you to simply type some stuff and this is simply a playground uh, and I'm typing in Swift and you can see on the right hand side you immediately see the result so it's good if you're testing out something if you're building a game you can see uh, you know how the different things behave if you're building a graph if you have some code for a bezier path or something you can uh, you know you can type it out over here and the output pane will display the uh, result but first thing you might be wondering why Swift why Apple created the Swift language, uh, why not Objective-C? Objective-C is of course you can, you know, it's it's uh, basically a merge between C and C++ or something. It was in between there. Um, quite frankly, I was quite comfortable with the Objective-C syntax, but it was not really considered a, a modern language. And you can see uh, from just this one line of code that Swift feels modern uh, according to Apple, it runs much faster and it has much more features of a modern language that we are going to see in the upcoming videos that I will be doing. Okay. Um, if you don't have this playground file in your code, you can simply add it. If you just right click and say new file, you can add the playground file. And right over here, you can see the Swift file. So you can add the Swift file also. If you want to add a Cocoa Touch file, and now you get a choice of the language, Objective-C or Swift. Most probably, uh, now people have asked me, should we start learning Swift? Should we start converting and all that stuff? Um, the answer is that it depends. Now, if you're working on some old project, uh, then yes, you do need Objective-C knowledge to maintain that project. If you are starting some greenfield application, completely new application, um, then I would say, yeah, sure, give give Swift a try, try it out. I mean, there might be, you might face some issues here and there, but you know, I mean, it's it's a good thing that you can start early on your own personal project, uh, absolutely. And if you do find bugs, please do a report on Apple, uh, the bug radar website. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to do everything in the playground. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add an Objective-C file. So I'm going to say oh, Cocoa Touch. And instead of Swift, I'm going to say Objective-C. And I'm just going to say that the file name is Hello World. There we go. We will create it. And there's another file which I actually I already added, but you can see that this is a bridging file and usually when you add these files for objective c file it adds this bridging header now there is the reason that uh, it didn't ask me to add this because it was already added i was just playing around uh, so this bridging file is where you add all the headers of the objective c files that you want to use or bridge the communication in your swift files we're going to take a look at that in the future okay but one thing you will notice, and you already know, that Objective-C files have a header uh, header file and the implementation file. But Swift file doesn't do that. Swift file is just dot .swift. There's no header. There's just the old, clean old implementation. Okay? 
So let's go to the Objective C. We have been using Objective C for some time now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a very simple constant. So I can say over here, integer, constant, uh, whatever you want to name it. Let's say a row height. And uh, I can say 44. And compile it. And it builds and everything. So we have a constant. So this is how you declare a constant in Objective C. Now, if I have to declare the same constant uh, in Swift, I'm going to say over here let, um, and I can say the row height equal to whatever, 44. And that's it. And here we go. We get the result on the right hand side pane. Okay. So if I want to change this now, if I'm going to say, okay, oh, by the way, this is like 55, you get an error immediately in the console output that let value cannot assign let value 55 because it's a constant. So how do you assign a value in Swift? So you can say var, okay, and let's say that we have a thing called greet equal to hello, okay. So this is how you declare a variable. So it's the, the, the variable value of course it can change. So I can simply say greet uh, equal to bye bye and it will be okay. Um, the Swift language will basically it will find out that what the type is of it will uh, you know it will find out that what the type is from the value that you assign over here. So you don't really need to write that this is a string. It knows it is a string. Okay. So you can do something like this. What about if you declare a something called let, uh, I don't know, um, something, whatever, and you can say 4.0. So it will be de declared as the value for float. And if you declare it as four, then it will be an int because the value over here. Now you can explicitly declare things as you like. You can make explicit, but uh, it will predict the type or it will find out the type based on the value that you assign. All right. Now, of course, Swift language is so huge. It's a completely new language. Apple has been working on it for a very long time. There's no way that I can cover everything in one single screencast. That's why I have added a whole new playlist just for Swift language itself. And uh, we will be, you know, adding many different uh, screencasts to that particular playlist. Okay. So if you if you want to try it out, try Swift out, I highly recommend that first you download Xcode six because you will need that to write your Swift applications. Now, if you are thinking about that, hey, I have a lot of code that I use for third party controls that I downloaded and they are in Objective-C and they're not updating their controls to Swift. So what should I do? Hey, you don't have to even worry about that because Swift and Objective-C can live in the same uh, application and they can communicate with each other. Okay, so all the code you can mix and match between the Swift language and the Objective-C. Now I know that I haven't really dive into Swift at this point, but this is just a very basic introduction about the variables that you can say. So var means the variable that can change the value. Let means it is a constant. Okay. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can declare methods in in the Swift uh, language. Okay. But just one more thing that you can do is if you go to over here, and let me make a function, like a very small function, foo. Okay. And if we have something called an string, uh, what is that? Read, and we say hello. Okay. And we can type something, say greed string by appending, and then you can say John Doe. Right? So you can do that over here. But in the Swift language, this is much more easy. Okay, because just like any uh, 
any programming, uh, modern programming language, you can use a plus equal to operator and it will concatenate those things and uh, display that. Cool, right? Um, if you want to, let's see if I can do that. Uh, cool, right? So what is going on over here is the row height is actually 44, which is like an integer. Uh, and I can add to the, I can add, I can convert it into uh, the string representation just by adding this, like a, a backslash and then typing it in uh, the, you know, row height and all that stuff. Uh, you can also do some other function over here. Oh, that's weird. There we go. So you can do different kind of calculation. If you have some variable that you want to calculate, you can say A and B, and it can calculate and print out the result, and you can see the result is correct, right? So this is it for the first screencast. I know, I mean, you guys are very excited. I'm super excited about Swift. I'm super excited about the whole, whole iOS framework itself, iOS 8. So many new features uh, that we're going to dig in in the future. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel and also, um, if you are not already following me on YouTube, I highly recommend that you do so at Adam Sharp. I also am running another account. I don't even know how to type that name. Uh, it's called Swift Cast. I don't know if it's Cast or Cast. See, I already forgot that what the name of the account is. But I think it's Cast with a S or maybe a Swift Cast. You know, I'll, I'll check it out and I'll let you know. Um, and usually on Adam Sharp, I do post uh, a lot of things. So even if you're not following this account, you should follow at least Adam Sharp to get all the updates. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, your donations are always appreciated. I do, uh, you know, uh, appreciate your donations. If you have, you can send it to me on PayPal at... Uh, on adamsharp at gmail.com. Okay, thank you very much and stay tuned for more screencasts.